Hey everyone, Stephen here for Camera Electronic and I have a very, very exciting product that just came into my hands. It is literally straight from the factory, so much that I don't even have a retail box for this. Um, <laughs> Sony just sent it. Uh, it's not faulty. It's just the box that they could find. But so exciting to get my hands on the first people here in Oz on Sony's brand new full frame mirrorless camera, the Sony ZV E1. And uh, wow. First impressions. Kind of looks cool in the white. Also comes in black, but super lightweight. I can't believe that this is a full frame camera. So when Sony launched the ZV line, they have definitely been going for the consumer slash vlogging slash content creator market. And it kind of sits somewhere between say your Sony A7S III um, and the ZV. <laughs> I need to keep up to date with all these names. The Sony, <laughs> let's do that again. It comes somewhere between the Sony A7S III, put in the middle there, of course the much more expensive older brother, and the Sony ZV-1. Honestly, out of the whole entire line, this one is the one I am most excited for that they've released. All right, so let's chat specifics about the world's smallest full frame camera. Now, this one is a video centric camera. So, straight out of the box, not the faulty box, <laughs> straight out of the retail box. You guys are gonna get 4K at 60 frames per second and later, so hopefully when you have a nice looking box similar to this, there's gonna be a software update that's gonna give you 4K 120, which is absolutely incredible. And of course, full frame E-mount lens, which means you can put beautiful stunning lenses like the G Master. This is the new 50 mil that Sony has come out in the nice retail box. So satisfying. Sony needs to bring out a, a range of white G Master lenses to, to match this. If you want some specs on the chip, this is a back illuminated CMOS Exmor R sensor. It's 12 megapixels, but we'll chat about why that's fine later. A Bion's XR image processing chip that's gonna give you eight times more processing power to boost things like low noise performance. And new to the chip and new to Sony's range is the AI chip, which gives us some pretty cool features features, especially for those in the vlogging and content creation scene. Let's chat about form factor. This is a nice, sleek, lightweight and compact camera. Now I make travel videography for a living, which means I'm constantly on the road. And if I can upgrade my equipment to save my back in the long run, I always will look for those options. And this, you can just run and gun with this, hold it up, plus put this down here, plus of course, that beautiful flip out screen. So you can go and do your vlogging, but even so, just being able to not add an external display and be able to quickly just see if you're in shot works perfectly fine. But of course, if you're not in shot, let's talk about some AI features. So first up, you've got five axis image stabilization built in, which means straight out of the bat, you're gonna get nice, smooth, stable footage. They even have dynamic active stabilization, which crops in a little bit, but it's gonna give you buttery smooth, almost gimbal-like stabilization. Now, speaking of the AI, with this brand new AI chip built in, after all, it's 2023, seems to be the rave with just about any product coming out these days. You can use AI auto reframing, which means while you're filming straight away, so just say you're walking around, the camera will automatically frame, crop in, move and follow you around whilst this is happening. So you don't have to put it into a video editing software. You can pretty much do it straight out of the bat, which of course is all about the ZV line. It's about people who either wouldn't know how to do that in a editing software like Premiere Pro, or for those people who just want things to work straight out of the box and not have to do it later. Now, next feature to talk about is the incredible, I'm just gonna preface that the incredible autofocus. So recently my wife and I, we redid our daughter's room. She wanted a mermaid flower themed bedroom and uh, we spent all week on it and I wanted to capture her first reaction to it. This is the setup I had because this camera was just on me at the time and it's a 50 mil and I'd set it to 1.4, which if you know anything about toddlers who are very excited to see their new mermaid room, uh, that's a very close and blurry shot and I was blown away. I was looking at her reaction just over the moon and then looking down at the screen and watching, <laughs> watching the eye tracking autofocus on this, looking at her and it just worked wonders. I was so impressed that that eye tracking auto focus is probably almost enough for me to switch from my way more expensive a7s3 
to this. Now, of course, with a camera that is targeted at content creators and vloggers, and I suppose beginner to intermediate and a little bit of advanced users is they have a lot of built-in cinematic features in here. So you can switch on and toggle cinematic mode. It's gonna crop it in all nicely for you. It's, it's gonna give you access to different color profiles. And what I thought was pretty cool is you can actually import your own LUT straight into here. Like I said, it's great to have the different options. You can do it in your post-production. But just having that option of doing it straight out of the body, that's pretty cool where cameras are moving towards. Now we'll be honest with you guys, I was a Canon user through and through up until about 2016 where I sold all my lenses and my bodies to switch to Sony. I picked up the A7S II and as a beginner eight years ago, I was still learning the ropes of my camera. And one of the main features I loved was there was an app store built into the camera. And there were things where you could just chuck a couple of bucks at your camera and you could get built-in time-lapse, built-in star lapse built-in miniature cities. These really fantastic beginner features while you still learn to become a pro. And it's a shame that the ZV line doesn't have that, which I think the market they're going for, they hands down should pop it in there. However, there's one little feature, one little silver lining is they've actually built a time-lapse feature straight into this. And uh, I picked up a little Lego set. I'm gonna do a little time-lapse, see how it goes. So of course this is just a first impressions. I only honestly had this in my hands for the last 48 hours and uh, I need to shift this back to Sony. But if you're wanting more breakdowns, if you want a full review, sample footage, even just a kind of like a walkthrough of the camera, let us know in the comments below. And of course you can always come and chat to the team at Camera Electronic and maybe have a play with the camera yourself. Chat to the friendly team there. But we'll see you guys next time.